You know that growling sound you hear from your stomach when you're hungry and then the sound goes away when you eat something. Our mouth waters when we see something that looks and tastes delicious. Those not so pleasant burps you get after eating something. Or that feeling of throwing up after overeating or after consuming something that wasn't good. Are you wondering why do such things happen? Okay, relax. As we proceed with this session, you'll have a clear picture about it. But you know what is common in all these activities? Yes, food. To any layman, food is eaten and then it's over. It's forgotten. Say for example, we eat a cookie for breakfast. Do we ever think what happens to that cookie after we eat it? Or how does that cookie give us energy? But don't worry, science is everywhere. Today, let's look at the fate of that cookie inside our body from the science point of view. And together, let's discuss the process of digestion and nutrition in humans. So coming back to our cookie, if you remember, we used our hands to put the cookie in our mouth. So since the food is put in, this process in scientific terms is called ingestion. This simply means as swallowing food. After entering our mouth, the food first comes in contact with our tongue. Now we get the taste of the food. So the next step would be to swallow it. But this cookie is too big and difficult to gulp. So to make this process of swallowing easy, our sharp teeth help to bite and chew the food to make it into small bits. These bits mix with the saliva in our mouth to form a paste which makes food easy to swallow. Now this brings us to a fun fact. Here we need to know that when we say our mouth is watering, it is not actually water but saliva which is secreted by the salivary glands present below the tongue. Okay, let's proceed to the next step of nutrition where the food is broken down and converted into simple molecules in the utilizable form by the body. This breaking down procedure is called digestion. But to know more about digestion, we'll have to rewind a bit and go to the time where the food was still in the mouth because digestion actually starts in the mouth itself. The saliva in our mouth contains an enzyme, a mylase, which breaks down starch from the cookie into glucose. So we can say that partial breakdown or digestion of starch starts in the mouth itself. But we don't always eat a cookie. We eat different kinds of foods. So all the food components are not digested by amylase alone. And therefore digestion isn't complete in the mouth. The food is pushed down in a tubular structure called the elementary canal by constant contractions and expansions. This movement of food is due to peristalsis. So after food has been pushed down, it now reaches an organ which is shaped like the alphabet J. And this organ is known as the stomach. As the food reaches here, the stomach expands in size. The food stays here for approximately 3 hours and undergoes digestion. And for this breakdown or digestion of food to take place, the inner walls of the stomach secret gastric juices. I hope you're with me. Let's pause for a while and talk about some fun facts. Do you know the true meaning of the term acidity? Adults keep complaining that they suffer from acidity where they experience sour burps. So what exactly is it? One of the components of the gastric juice is dilute hydrochloric acid. This acid in the stomach makes the environment acidic, 
and when we don't eat anything the levels of this acid increase as there is no food to digest thus causing acidity which results in sour burps let's come back to gastric juice another component of it is the enzyme pepsin this enzyme breaks down proteins into utilizable form for the body but this enzyme has a condition it performs only in acidic environment so now you know the importance of acid in the stomach it indirectly aids in digestion but other than this can you also guess some other functions of acid in our stomach the acid helps in killing the bacteria which you may have consumed unknowingly with your food but when we hear there is acid in our stomach isn't this scary to know something dangerous is present in our stomach so to prevent us from this acid the stomach wall is coated with a slimy sticky substance called the mucus this also happens to be the last component of gastric juice with the help of these gastric juices the digestion process is partially complete the food which was in the acidic environment in the stomach now reaches a place where the conditions are completely opposite the name of this organ is small intestine this long tube which is coiled and compact has a very small inner diameter and hence the name small intestine this organ is a site for complete digestion of food from all the families in the small intestine the environment is alkaline due to bile secretions given out by the gall bladder but a point to be noted here is that bile is originally produced by the liver and just stored in the gall bladder this alkaline condition in the small intestines is necessary for the action of the enzyme named trypsin trypsin is secreted by pancreas and it is this trypsin that aids in digestion of fats into smaller utilizable molecules okay so by this time majority of the food has been digested into small bits food from all the families is now in the actual nutrient form and is capable of being absorbed by the walls of the intestine this step is called absorption as all the nutrients are being absorbed but to increase the surface area for nutrient absorption the intestinal wall has small hair like filaments on them that absorb all the nutrients efficiently something to ponder upon is that the wall of the intestine is connected to many blood vessels so after the nutrients have been absorbed they enter a blood stream and we all know that blood is a transport medium for our body it takes the nutrients and transports them to all the parts of the body these nutrients present in the blood are then taken to all the cells of our body the cells assimilate or absorb the nutrients in them and hence this step is known as assimilation here the cells take these nutrients and generate energy for our survival so now you know how we get our energy from our food but if you remember we said that most of the food was digested in the small intestine so are you wondering is there some food which is not digested or difficult to digest yes the undigested food material from the small intestine then enters the large intestine here it stays for some time and during that time all the water content from this material is absorbed by the walls of the large intestine so now this almost solid part is passed out of our body by the anus in the form of stool or feces the act of passing stools is scientifically known as ejection so did you see the fate of the cookie that we had for breakfast in fact this happens to all the food that we keep eating during the day
So let's end this session with a fun fact. Did you know it takes between 24 to 72 hours for the entire process from eating to excreting it out? Relax, every individual has a different time for digestion. But you can say that on an average it takes around 40 hours. So here on the screen you can see some foods that are difficult to digest and some foods which are easy to digest. So for a healthy digestive system, think twice about what is good to eat and what is not. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts regarding our digestive system, you can ask us in the comments below. Stay tuned with us for more such interesting and fun-filled sessions on biology. Click on subscribe to stay tuned for our upcoming sessions and don't forget to hit like and share. So till next time, keep watching, keep learning and follow your curiosity.